Welcome back. Welcome aboard another par train. I'm one of your co-hosts, Evan Singer. I got Matt Cermak with me. What's up, my man? Great to see you, Ev. It's Open Championship weekend, and we got a great recap coming. We're fired up, guys. If you just watched the finish of the 2024 Open Champ, uh, we're going to do what we always do. We're going to recap uh, the major, but we're going to do it in a way that can help you lower your own handicap, I'm pulling out all the nuggets we need from the best in the world. But before we get to that, in case you guys are new, welcome aboard. We help frustrated golfers enjoy the ride again. Because if you can learn to smile through bad golf, you can smile through anything. Bad weather, bad shots, you name it. Uh, so no matter where your ball goes, sir, what do they got to do? Just enjoy the ride. Enjoy the ride, guys. Take care. Sir, we have a lot to get to. Should we just dive we in? Do. That's what we do. We dive in. All right. Every time before we do a, a, a major recap, we do the initial reactions. Yep. Why don't you lead us off? Well, Royal Trunev, uh, you know, you've played there. We're going to talk about that. Um, you know, um, I love the golf course. Um, I, I just love to watch. And I really got to watch a lot yesterday, pretty much all of yesterday and all of today. Yeah. Um, and it was just awesome. You know, what are our memories of Troon 2016? Henrik and Phil, right? The duel, the second duel under the sun where Henrik yeah. shoots 63. Bill shoots 65. Um, that's when you kind of, well, that's when you think of, of, of Troon because that was the last time that was there. So that was eight years ago. But um, Troon is one of the classic, you know, truly classic open rotation courses. There's been 10 open championships there. Palmer and Watson have won there. Um, 2004 was Todd Hamilton. 2007 was uh, Justin Leonard. Um, and of course, what do we think about with Troon? The postage stamp hole, number yeah. eight, right? And, uh, yeah. It's it's just always so cool to see that hole on TV. That's the best short par three in the world because the green is so small, smaller than any green in the history of greens. Um, and and you know what, Ev? Uh, it's so cool to see the first six holes uh, along the sea, right? And it's just it's just an amazing start out. And then you get to seven, the wind totally changes direction. The course goes inland. You get really the meat and the tough part of the golf course from like hole seven to fourteen. Um, so I, I just absolutely love the golf course, the mix of the tight shots, the blind shots, um, and then you know hole, holes like number eleven, you know the rail, the railroad hole, toughest, maybe the toughest tee shot in the world. Part of it, you know, five hundred yards hole? into the wind. The par um, train hole, what a hole! Yeah, that that is that is the true par train hole. Um, and you know what? Look, I mean, as a viewer, to see the terrible conditions yesterday. And then the nice conditions today, I think is a great, is a great viewing experience to see players really struggle, be really challenged. Some really came through and shined and most didn't because it's, I mean, it's so difficult, right? We saw Billy Horschel put on an absolute exhibition on Saturday. Yeah. Shane Lowry coming off the course, you know, made six bogeys and eight holes talking about the course is unfair. It's too long in these conditions. And then Which go today. It's shocking because he's the guy that you think plays the best in that stuff. Right. And that's he, kind of what he prides himself and on. And he really right? didn't play that bad. It's just, he wasn't really missing shots. It's just bogeys just pile up. Um, yeah. And um, and then to see today, right, with pretty, that's pretty classic conditions, summer in Scotland, 60 degrees, cloudy, good prevailing wind. But um, yeah, 15 the, to 20 the, miles an hour. But the scores were low. Um, we have to remember, uh, you know, Stenson shot 20 under here in 2016. Um, you know, the golf course is, like a lot of golf courses in the open rotation are gettable. Um, you can, you can produce really low scores if the weather doesn't turn and the weather just turns in an instant here. And it's, and it's, and it's not like here in America where there's thunderstorms where so play suspended. He's getting, you know, open jam, jam golf playing through the wind, the rain, the cold, right. and you know, the ball just doesn't stop even with the rain. So, and then throwing the pop bunkers and all the elements. So, I absolutely loved it. Xander's an incre incredible champion. We're going to get into him, but uh, what about you, Jeff? Initial takeaways as yeah, someone see, who's played it in 2015, too. Yeah. I mean, first of all, don't you love how the RNA and Lynx golf lets Mother Nature dictate how hard it's going to be? You know, yeah. I feel like the USGA has done a better job the last few years, but that was always the gripe, right? Human beings manipulating, trying to manipulate and dictate what the final score is. Whereas, you know, you set up the course and mother nature, we've all seen people tear up the old course at St. Andrews when it's calm. And then we've all seen people do what people did on Saturday at Royal Troon when it really blows. And that's the beauty of 
of links golf. You kind of have to adapt to whatever, you know, the conditions are. But um, when I played Royal June in 2015, just to give people a little context, um, it was actually kind of a funny story. To give people context, um, I went by myself. Um, I had a month in between jobs and um, I was went on a trip uh, with my ex, actually. And then I I went on to Scotland by myself because I was like, I'm over here. I have more time off. I'm doing it. She sure. didn't love it. But that's why she's the ex. That okay? was then. This is now. That's that was then. <laughs> now I'm married to the greatest girl in the world. Shout out, Tara. Anyways, shout out. Shout out. I played when I was there in, in um, 2015. I played Glen Eagles, Kings Barnes. The old course, St. Andrews and Royal Troon. Now, this was the not first bad. time I've ever driven on the other side of the road and I was alone. My sense of direction is not good. That's true. And, and I will never forget, I almost didn't play Royal Troon because it was the fourth day and I loved Kings Barnes and St. Andrews being so close to where I was staying in St. Andrews. The idea of driving two and a half hours on the other, other side of the road to play Royal Troon was one of the most stressful things I've ever experienced, but I did it. It's got to be done because the open the, the, was going incre on. incredible courage. Yeah, you were one year before Stenson, 2016. So, yeah. so I did it. I stuck through for the wow. passengers even before the passengers were around. Even before we did the pod, that was a little before the pod. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, anyways, I my takeaway from Royal Troon when I played it was it was the truest Lynx golf experience I had ever had at that time. All the other rounds that I had had, Glen Eagles, Kings Barn, St. Andrews, I got really lucky. There wasn't a ton of wind, and there was no rain. So I got really lucky. When I got to Royal Troon, I had the opposite wind that the players played with today, and this just shows how this can dictate the teeth of the course. Everybody talked about Dustin Johnson said it, right? Um, Shane Lowry said it. So many guys said this is the hardest nine holes I've ever played. Justin Rose said it's one of the hardest nine holes I've ever played yesterday on the back nine. For me, the front nine, I hit driver three wood or driver four iron into every hole, and I couldn't even get there. On the back nine, I hit five iron wedge yeah, downwind, right? And so it's just the power of wind. And I just remember being like, wow, this is like, you know, it's not necessarily like from a layout standpoint, the look of it, links courses can kind of start to blend together. It wasn't anything besides the train elements and the amazing clubhouse at the finish. Amazing sitting area, by the way, one of the best sitting areas, the smoke big windows right off yeah. six feet behind the green. Yeah. yeah amazing. Um, I could have sat there all day, but beside that, not something that's going to necessarily wow you with how it looks and how unique it is but the postage stamp is definitely memorable and i think we should say it i was i, I loved hearing all the players um especially with my work with dream golf and stuff like i i loved hearing them say you don't need to make a par three 230 yards to make it hard like the best par threes in the world are short and that doesn't mean they're easy think you know pebble, think of tory yeah yeah and so that's the beauty, I think, of good architecture is it doesn't need to be lengthened necessarily to be really hard. So, you know, I just think we are so lucky. We were talking about this off air. My final thoughts before we dig in more is I think we are so lucky in 2024 with the major season that we had. I thought oh, yeah. there was drama coming down the stretch at every major. We got great winners throughout, right? And we got we got, the, we got the stars of golf stars yeah. of golf winning now we were joking about this i do not what was his name lawrence i don't even know his name was it lawrence just yeah just keep <laughs> he's laughing at me on video on youtube if you want to see us laugh at each other um every monday but the the idea of this build-up this major season to finish the last major with him winning, nothing against him. Come on, that's that would be the worst. What are you like, getting I, at? You know, you know, <laughs> you were confused, right? Because his his last name is Lawrence, his first name is Thriston Lawrence. So, but right, you know, but you, you, this is a guy who's won four times in well, his like career, some Tour, big, yeah, and some big tournaments too, yeah, uh, BMW and, and such. And uh, he goes out and shoots thirty two on the front nine, looking like he's the guy. 
You're yeah. like, I can't stand this. No, I don't want to see it again. This is a guy who's a really good player, but would yeah, be considered I want to, a no name to the average. I want the wheels to fall watcher. off for Thriston you, Lawrence as I'm watching. I, I mean, I'm not going to deny that I don't love seeing you know the 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 top the greats of the game battling each other and, and winning, but I do I do love you know seeing you seemed when we were talking off air you seemed like you were really okay with Thriston Lawrence. Oh, winning. I would have been absolutely okay with it because I think it's the great these are the great stories when. You're, nobody's expecting you to win. Nobody know. I mean, this was Brown. You know, the first three days. You know, he yeah. qualifies for the tournament. <laughs> you know, he's right. never played in a major, and he's hitting shots like he's probably never hit in his life. Even though he's he's a great golfer, but like to me, these stories are so incredible. How do they happen? So I think they're great to unpack, and they're great to how can he control his nerves? How can he overcome this? You know, so right. I love that stuff, and we've seen that in, in, in British Opens. They did this course, uh, Todd yeah. Hamilton, even though he was a winner, but he was a no-name in 2004. So we kind of disagree there. But at the end of the day, Ev, you got what you wanted. Now, would you have wanted a little more drama coming down the last couple holes? Sure. But Xander, to to have a legendary season inked today, yeah. I mean, it's pretty incredible. Yeah. I mean, it's. I just love when I see guys that are elite talents and players that, you know, not that, guess, not even a year ago, Xander was the, the best player to not win one. Yeah. And now, and now he has two. Making history. Yeah. And now nobody says that. So I, I'm fascinated by how small things, gradual gains can totally change the narrative and help you achieve whatever you want to achieve. So we're, yeah. we're going to get to Xander and we're going to dig in very deep on Xander. Um, should we talk about the weather? Real quick, yeah, playing I, in bad weather. We've done full episodes on this, but I think it's worth calling out before we go to. We're going to go to Rory, well, Scotty. I, we're going to talk it, Rose, Horschel, Xander, maybe a few I, others. I, it might tie in too to what you might have to say about Rory, but yeah, you know, I yeah, I think uh, you know the weather we saw this weekend. You know, you know, is the recreational or the aspiring golfer, or the weekend warrior, like, or, or ideally, we don't want to play in these types of conditions. You know, like, you know, but you know, we, we're kind of there to hopefully have some sun and you know, some uh, not crazy wind and cold and rain. But look, they're going to happen. And if you paid for a round and the sirens aren't blowing, and you want to play and you want to keep it going, and if you're if you and if that's the attitude, well, you want to do your best, right? You're not going to go out there just to laugh because that's dumb. Um, so let's talk about. I I think it's important to like figure out, you know what the mindset's got to be like, how you strategically have to think and what, what can work in, in those conditions. Because a lot of the time, let's just face it, you're just meant to shoot higher, but that's kind of a reset of your goals and expectations. And um, so watching Horschel, you know, was just a, a masterclass of it on Saturday. Um, you know, what I was thinking about in, in high school, I had this really great tournament my senior year. It was a sectional championships and it was, there was like five sectionals, being played around the state. So you had to get go from regionals to sectionals to state. So it was a qualifier for the state tournament. And it was 37 degrees, sleet, Yikes. wind, some snow around Chicagoland. And it was funny, a couple of the other sectionals got canceled that day. Ours didn't. Um, <laughs> and it was just, it was so miserable. And I just remember warming up on the range with our hand warmers and just you know, hitting 10 balls and going inside, hitting 10 balls, going inside. And it was just a miserable day. And, um, you know, you stretch, I, did you stretch as much back then as you do now? Yeah. yeah yes. But probably more, wow. pro Always probably, been a stretch. probably. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I remember that day because, you know, I ended up shooting even par and I won sectionals, you know, on like one of the toughest days I've ever played. And I, I was thinking about that round as I was watching these guys and like, what did I have figured out that day? And, and I, and as I listened to Horschel talk about like, you, know, you just got to bunt it around. He talked about that. You just got to, it's, it's just, so you bunt it around and you're talking about the guys who, you know, hit it 350 off the tee. And it's true. Like you have to be, but first, before you can bunt it around, you have to be so prepared. What does that mean? Rain gear, towels, six to eight gloves, umbrella, you know, hand warmers, like, because, you know, I don't have a caddy, at least, you know, you've got to do it all yourself and yeah. being so prepared and so, so ready that way, because 
I, I, we've all experienced it. The minute those grips get a little wet, it's over. I mean, you saw those guys, you know, Justin Rose, especially like, you know, caddy with the umbrella over him right before he's getting ready to hit, just trying to get that dry. Um, so you have to be so prepared, rain cover over the bag, um, rain gloves where to, and then figuring out the right layering, you know, because you saw Horschel genius taking off the jacket before he, before he would hit. And then he put it back on, on between shots because even though you have a zero restriction jacket and they're great, something can just fidget or fool you or get locked, you know? Um, oh, so, so if he was putting the jacket, I thought he was a badass all day. I posted a tweet of those big <laughs> offensive linemen, the green Bay Packers <laughs> being short sleeves in the cold with their breath showing. <laughs> I was like, Billy Horschel is that today. Like he was going, he was going, he was going back and forth, but he teed <laughs> off the first with no jacket. And I was yeah. like, this guy is fucking ready. Yeah. Short um, sleeves. So what I, what I, what I think is important about, so those who prepare are always going to put themselves, you know, for, set themselves up for success, even though it might not go that way, but you got to be prepared. But when you're so prepared Ev, this is the key to this guys, when you've got all that taken care of, right. And you got your grips dry and then you go make that swing and it's 38 degrees and you know, wind and rain, you hit your shot, you do the best you can. And you're probably going to swing a little smoother and a little bigger target, a little more conservative. After you hit that shot, you don't have time to think about that result because you've got to get back to keeping your clubs and your grips and your body dry and warm. It's like, hit your shot. Okay, club back in, umbrella, grips, towels, and on to the next. And I think that's really important because it keeps you in a frame of mind, frame of mind just to realize this day sucks. I have to adjust. The scores are going to be higher. And just stay prepared and stay dry. And on to the next, as opposed to just like we typically do, we get so caught up in those yeah. the results of our, of our shot. So, um, you can't prepare enough. And like, like, uh, like Horschel said, bunt it around. You got to be smoother. You got to take more club. You got to hit knockdowns. Um, and you got to rely on your short game. I mean, wasn't it incredible watching him? He was, like, yeah. he, was like, he was expecting to chip and pitch in because in his mind, he knows that's going to be his game all day. I'm not going to be hitting greens. None of these guys are hitting greens. I'm going to be short. I got to miss it short and I'm going to pitch uphill and I'm going to be, as you like to say, an athlete that way. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I just want to share some of that about yeah. what's been successful for me. I um, want to because, add one thing yeah. to that. It's attitude, right? Yep. So it's the preparation for it, but it's funny how the preparation with the wrong attitude could almost work against you, right? You have all the stuff you need to try and avoid the cold, avoid the rain that could almost work against you in like a little bit of a defensive. I don't want to be out here way. Whereas I think what Billy did besides being prepared is he embraced kind of the pain of it. Like it's hard for everybody. The yep. people who are going to get, it was, it's a little U S open like in the sense that it's going to be so hard. The person who kind of stays even keel stays neutral and embraces it the most uh, is probably going to win. And ironically, when you listen to Xander's, we'll get to this later, but a quick nugget, when you listen to Xander's pre-tournament presser, he talks about how he loves Lynx golf because it really forces you to have a good attitude and you have to adapt and roll with the punches. Because of and how un unexpected things get. Yeah, and, unexpected. Yeah. You could have no wind and then you could have 40 miles an hour the next hole, next shot. You could yeah. have rain, you could have sun, and you get every season on one hole potentially. Right. And and you know, look guys, look these guys are pros. They've got access to every every rain jacket and every rain glove and caddies and all that stuff. So, they're going to be prepared, but for us, if we work to be prepared when we have to play in the rain, that's good. that will set you up to me, take care of that. And then that's going to bring out some joy and happiness on a tough day. Yeah, it might um, be easier to have a good attitude. Be, yeah. Prepared, so we just right? have to work harder, really thinking about that day and that weather and what's coming. And because the, because I've played in rounds this year where I played a lot of rain and I'm just, wasn't prepared. Didn't yeah. have enough towels. I didn't, and my clubs get wet. And then you're like, you know what? Screw this. Yeah. You know, and, and look, that's, I lived, that's I not lived where you want to be. And that's, it's all, that's my fault. I didn't, I didn't prepare, right. you know? Right. And I can tell you, I lived in Scotland for a month and you can't go around hoping it's going to be nice all day. day. 
Damn. Yeah, coming from a guy that lives in LA when yeah, you don't you, even check the weather. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can't set yourself up for that's setting yourself up for failure. And ironically, I played um oh, what is the course? Um oh my god, I can't believe I'm forgetting. It's the biggest dune, one of the biggest dunes. Oh, Cruden Bay. Um, I got the sunniest, calmest day to start Cruden Bay. And I'm like, oh, this is my chance. Right. Right. Well, what did that do? That put more pressure on me to perform because I had good conditions. I'm still attached to something. I'm still attached to weather impacting results. Now I can perform versus you just go into the shot no matter what's happening and you do the best you can with it. You're not you're well, not yeah. hoping for certain things. You're not you're not mad that it's well, raining. You're not hoping for sun. You're not glad it's sunny. You're you're just there. You're just you know, it's, you know, it's the hardest thing about heavy winds too, is being able to just forget about hitting it hard and far. Yeah. You have to, ex and you, these guys were doing it. You got to be creative. Host, you, you just got to accept that. Okay. I'm not getting, I can't reach this par four and two. Right. But what good is it? Me going to try to get squeezed 10 more yards off the tee. Right. And you saw the, <laughs> but that's to guys, that's the hardest thing. And then when it's really wet, especially around the greens, you got to get, be more shallow. You got to have more width. It's so easy to get steep and stuck in that ground. Um, those were two things I always tried to lean on, uh, except that you're not going to hit it far and be smooth. And yeah. And, and it's uh, tough too. Cause you're even around the greens putting you're, you're not used to thinking about wind with putting, no. you know, you, there's a lot of things yeah. that are tough about links golf, but it forces you to, to create shots and it, it, you can play a hole. Every hole can be played a variety of ways. You saw guys hitting drivers off some tees. This guy in the same groups hitting an iron, right? Like yeah. that. You don't see that in the U.S. Um, okay. So yeah, I think I think that's important. You know, we're not always playing in the tough weather, but but if you do, you'd be surprised. You'd really challenge yeah, attitude yourself. is everything. You, you learn a lot about yourself. Yeah. So so how about I start with Rory? Again, yeah. like I said, we're gonna we're gonna quickly talk about Rory, Scotty, Justin Rose, Billy Horschel, and then I want us to spend the majority of the second half on Xander, obviously. But there is one thing I wanted to talk about, and I tweeted this, and I I just want to caveat: Rory is one of the greatest players of all time. I am a nine handicap. Like I'm not here to criticize Rory as if I know any better than him but from afar from everything we've learned from the best players and the best mental coaches in the world i will tell you rory said something in his presser on friday that you would never hear tiger woods say now you might disagree with with my take here but mm -hmm. um and uh, maybe he are was you just talking about when he made the triple on the fourth hole yeah okay yeah he says, when I made a, was that an eight or a seven? I think it was a seven. And the second okay. shot literally went two feet. Yeah. And he said, yeah. when I made a triple, I'm okay. not going to lie. I started thinking about where I'm going to go on vacation next week. Because I pretty much knew there was no chance that I could make the weekend. And I think he needed to go four or five under in the next five holes to make the weekend. Now, it's very possible that after what he went through at Pinehurst and the tough day, he was just mentally spent, right? And it was just human frustration coming out. But the thing that I've learned about the best players and the best winners in the world is they have a relentless fight. So Tiger's cut streak is a perfect example of that. When he would get down and he would be playing bad and he had his C game, he would create a new challenge that I need to go three under over the next six to get to here and make a cut. Like it's no longer about winning his singular goal. Everything in the world that matters to him is about a new challenge to bring it in at the score that he needs. And he would do it right. So I think it taught me two things about Rory. You can tell me if I'm being too hard on him, but one is I don't think he has, I think he, he gave up. He gave up on the round. Even if statistically it wasn't possible, 
a lot of pros have told us, Sarm, that even if they're not going to make a cut, they might find something in the next six holes that brings them into the next week or sets up their next season, right? Um, so I don't think that he really had the fight. I think he gave up too soon. And I think the be number two is the best players learn how to play with their B game and their C game. And Rory, the only time he's won a major is when he has his A plus game and he has such a big lead, he kind of coasts in. And the only time he's had top fives in majors other than Pinehurst is he doesn't have a chance and he has a great Sunday. And then it pops him into a top five. He's never really won with the lead and fought someone off without it being able to coast in. Even Paul McGinley said this in Live from the Open, who was his Ryder Cup captain, I think in 2014. He said that. So, you know, I think that's something that is a little concerning for me that it is maybe telling of like, hey, if you're getting frustrated out there when you don't have your A game, he's just not a mutter to me. Like the best winners are mutters when you think of like a horse, right? doesn't matter what the weather, the mutter will run and they will win. And he seems to struggle when it's not the best conditions and he doesn't have his A game. Yeah. I think some people agree with you. I don't. Um, I think we a I, lot I think, of people can I, learn from that too. Like yeah, I, I, we're not going to have our A game a lot. And there's some, but there's some facts in there that are undisputable. What you said, like we just haven't seen him, you know, other than Pinehurst really be leading aside for, you know, his wins. Um, and like, he's gotten those top fives in majors um, kind of being far back and then having really great Sundays out of contention. But first off, why are we just comparing him to Tiger? He's not Tiger. We know it. Yeah. Why is it? He's better than everybody else. Yeah. I'm just saying, if he wants to win more majors like Tiger. But but Tiger won majors with his A game. I mean, you don't win majors without your A game. I think so Tiger I th probably won majors without his A game, but he's Name also one. an outlier. Name one besides 2008 when he didn't have a leg. I mean, I had to go through the list, but there was a ton of tournaments he won without his A game. Well, majors you're talking about here. Rory's won tournaments without his A game. We're talking about majors. Right? Well, I'm going to have to call now, the stats now, guy in, but I bet you he has. Uh, I just, okay. Well, <laughs> uh, if you're winning majors, you have your A game no matter who you are. Okay. <laughs> you just, I just, you just are. I mean, there's no, I mean, Tiger beat Bob May by one in, in 2000, but he still shot. 12 under, you know? Um, well, okay. let me, You're let me interject real quick. I don't think Xander had his a game all week. Well, and how it, do you have your, I mean, the, the weather's so bad. He shot 65 today. He was right. a bogey free. This is, Oh, a for plus sure. Plus. This is his a, a game. game. Today was his a game, well, but you don't okay, Thursday but shot one under. Okay. But you, you don't Friday have shot one over <laughs> Thursday. Not, yeah. But it's not perfect. Every single moment. Well, that's what, that's what I'm trying to but, say. Okay. Okay. But here's, a, but here's but here's the quote. Rory, I think expects that. So the quote triggered you, and a lot of people. He just said what Tiger would never say. Well, right, he's a lot more he, honest than Tiger. Hundred percent. Yeah. And whether that's to his detriment or not, also he finished he, after that triple bogey. He was he went even par the next fourteen holes. So you know, I just think the conditions got to him. He admitted to it. He had a hard time adapting. Look. In 2002, Tiger had the lead at the British Open at Mirfield, and he shot 81. Did Tiger mentally give up? Never seen it before. Yeah. That terrible wind and rain. He shot 65 the next day and lost by six to Ernie. Tiger, I mean, it, but Rory's, Rory's to me, Rory's not Tiger. Yeah, um, that's fair. I, just, I also think Rory's, you know, it's interesting because he played really good at the Genesis, <laughs> You know, he's finished top five. Um, I think I've where I'm a little more on par with you. I think when we did the recap of the U.S. Open was just there's just something the weight of the world is on his shoulders, and he can't seem to he can't seem to figure out that. And it's accepting his performance. It's it's affecting his performance, and I think um, the and then the conditions absolutely got to him this week. I don't think he gave up. Just I just saying, find it fascinating. Him saying that, I mean, if you want to, I mean, Justin Thomas shot forty-five on the front nine. 
We haven't talked yeah. about that on the second day, not even in the worst of the conditions. I know. So, you know, and Billy Horschel was talking about yesterday, you got who wants it the most. I think some of these guys want it too much. Rory wants it oh, too yeah. much. Oh, for sure. <laughs> for sure. So I just find it fascinating to close out. Rory's Rory. not the killer Tiger Woods is just like LeBron James is not the killer that Michael Jordan is. Those are just facts. And we want them that we've always wanted them to be. They're just not. That's a great point. And it's probably a good comp. Well, they're maybe, better people maybe, for it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, maybe LeBron they're just is not better, better than Rory is, but regardless, I think it's a, a good too comp. Too hard to compare, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, the last thing I'll say about Rory, I just find it. Don't you think it's interesting that the one tournament we've ever heard him talk about at Pinehurst, when he finally embraced this idea of boring golf, right? Hitting an iron to a certain spot, taking your medicine, not trying to wow everybody with smashing your driver as far as you can every single time. He had a chance to win with three holes to go. And I think Xander showed us what that looks like. Xander didn't wow anybody, but he plods along. He takes his medicine. He he plays what the what course do you think gives wow him. Mean, what do you think wow means? I think, and I've tweeted this before, I my personal opinion is I think Rory is so gifted with hitting the golf ball and so amazing. His whole identity might be rooted in wowing people with his driver. And how he hits these towering, perfect high draws uh -huh. that it is probably really hard. Remember when Virgil Herring asked us I mean, on the pod? Yeah. Do you want to hit amazing shots or do you want to shoot great scores? Well, yeah. But I think, I Tiger think it's and harder Phil for wow Tiger and Phil were wowers. Yeah, no. I just think it's harder for Rory to plot along. I think it's harder for him to take his medicine. I I just think he has more fun hitting. Amazing. Well, shots. I think maybe, what, maybe, my maybe what you're getting at when your ability is so good and so gifted, sometimes you'll take on things even yeah. the greatest shouldn't take on. Yeah. And it gets him in trouble. I think that's what you're trying to say. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. I think it's fair. So, okay. We could talk about Roy for days. Ev. Let's, let's talk about Justin Rose before we talk, talk about Xander. This is, is there a anything guy, you want to say about Scotty before we get to Rose and Horschel? I mean, I, I don't really have much on Shuffler. I think you maybe wanted to sneak one in. So thanks for reminding me. I mean, he had another good major, <laughs> you know, he, he's, these the six wins masters this year. He's, he's always there no matter what. Yeah. Sure. Do we, are we going to talk about his putting? Okay. If there's a, if he has a weakness, it's his putting some inconsistency yeah. there. He had the best three, what I've ever seen in 17 yesterday, <laughs> that low cut to two feet and he spun a three wood. Yeah. You know, uh, it looked like he tweaked his back was, maybe late in the round today. I don't know. He hit it. Did you see him on 18? He hit it 100 yards on 18. He didn't even get I don't to think the fairway. I saw that. And he, and he held his back. I oh. think that the, the, the three putt for double on nine hurt. You, I think you were saying, Evan, that's what you want to get to. You thought you, thought you saw a side, of, a side of him we haven't seen. Like he was just so anger, angry at himself. And I think he was. I just find him to be actually very intense, but not yeah. like Terrell Hatton. Or John yeah. Rahm screaming, but like, boy, he the look in his eyes when, when he hits bad putts, it, it's, it's he's a scary dude. He's intense. Yeah, but um, I don't, I don't have much. I think he's just, just the only thing I'll say about Scotty. Unbelievable. Was, no, I thought it was actually yeah. kind of fun to see him, and I don't think I, I don't think it was angry. I just can't no, remember a time you... where the best ball striker in the world would hit a shot and the club falls out of his hands. Um, because he thought it was so bad, right? There was a post on Zyre Golf that he didn't hit it past the the red tees. That was on eighteen. Um, yeah. yeah, one of us. Oh, okay. Yes, I did see that. But he also um, dropped a club on a, a, a second shot on the back nine. Where he hit it to like forty feet, but he totally he was trying to draw it. And he pushed it, and he dropped the club too. Yeah. So I think it, it's it's a good reminder. You know, he's still top ten, right? But even Scotty Scheffler can hit errant shots, even though it doesn't seem like it when we watch his highlight reel, it seems like every week. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be fascinating to see next year. How many, how many majors do you think Scotty will have at the end of next year? I don't know. I got to look at the, we got to look at the course layout. I think the bigger question is, is we've got, we have solidified the number one and number two players in the world, Tiger, er, uh, Scheffler and Xander. Sorry, yeah. Rory. You're number three. Yeah. yeah. You know? 
sorry, Bryson, you know, like, and I think that's what we got to kind of figure out, but yeah. Um, yeah. But um, anything on Justin Rose have, I mean, a guy you've loved for a long time. I've always loved watching him. Yeah. Crazy to think he's 43. He qualified yeah. for this event um, and played absolutely amazing golf to shoot yeah. 67 on the final round. And yeah, we, we were talking about yeah. off air. He looked yeah. like the guy poised to win when everybody else was kind of middle of the green burning edges. He was hitting it to five, eight feet. It seemed like every the first six holes in the front nine, he was hitting fairways. Um, even though it was on like the far right of every fairway, he was putting it to six to eight feet. And, you know, I love Rose. Um, I've had the chance to meet him a couple times. He challenged me to hit his driver. Yeah. I snap hooked it in front of him. He told me to slow down. It's been quite a memory for me, but he's an intense competitor. When you think of a competitor and a guy who likes to compete, well, Justin because Rose, it, because it seems visible, like he is fist pumping. He has got that Keegan Bradley kind of mean look but on his face. Yeah, but also the laser look yeah. before he yeah. hits. Yeah. You can tell he's really visualizing it. And when you saw him at the Ryder Cup at 40, I guess, 42 years old, I mean, he was willing putts in from everywhere, right? Doesn't matter his form coming in. So I really wanted Rose. I think Rose, Xander, and Scotty were my three that I wanted to see towards the end. Um, but what an amazing story to be able to – yeah qualify I think, you're, I think you're dead on compete. A, you know one thing i want to call out about rose which i love and i think a lot of people notice this is just how robotic he is with his routine mm -hmm. it's incredible right yeah. you know he always makes that funny exaggerated yeah kind of downswing feel um but it's, it's just the same every time and a quick call out with horschel because with the routine i caught this i just highlighted this you notice about horschel ev that he has three different routines with his driver, long irons, and his putter. Does he really? Oh, wait, yeah. the putter is a little crazy. Yeah, so Horschel's a very intense, can be a little angry, animated, high-strung guy. Yeah. And, you know, I noticed with his driver, he takes a full swing rehearsal to the mm -hmm. top, Yep, comes back down and hits. With his irons, he takes a half rehearsal. Mm. And then with his putting, he sits, you know, just outside of the golf ball and he's fidgeting a lot, right? And he's trying, he, he lets and he's his arm hang and he's finding his comfort zone. And once he finds it in his hands in the line and the speed, he walks right in, no practice swings, doesn't even look and goes. And I think that's really important, guys. So whether it's you're more the Justin Rose type or think about your personality with like Billy Horschel, you got, you got to work on your routines and try things that find comfort for you. It doesn't have to look exactly the same. And I found this when I was in Nebraska last week playing with Jay McBride as bench party. Ev, I had two different thoughts. It was like for my driver, it was, I'm hitting a cut. And then with the irons, I'm chasing it. You know, and it was just, you know. You what does that get, mean? You know, I, I just like, I'm like with my, with my driver, I feel like I'm just hit, I'm, I'm hitting a smooth cut. And then with, when I say I'm chasing with my irons, I've been having a hard time attacking it, you know? Mm. So those are kind of mental feels and thoughts and they're just, they're, they're different than the driver than the irons. And for Horschel, it's like, Jesus Christ, this guy's got a lot going on here. Yeah. But it clearly works for him. And as you know, better than anybody have the driver feels a lot different than the irons. Yeah. Right. And so I think there's really something there when you're working with your coaches and you're working on your routines, guys, the whole goal is to feel comfortable before we hit, or at least kind of comfortable. And that's and a good he, point too. And he's, like he's done it. And this putting so fun to watch too. And a little pop stroke. Works yeah. well on slow greens, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think it's important because when you say that, I think it's easy for someone to hear like, it can feel a bit burdensome. Yeah, like, too much. Like, yeah. oh, okay, so I got to walk into, so I'm going to step back and I'm going to walk into the shot or I'm going to take a practice swing or I'm not. And it, it can almost feel silly. It can almost yeah. feel like you're just checking a box. I don't know why I'm doing it, but everybody does it, so I'm going to do it. What I think the core of what yeah. you're saying is, why? So what right. are you trying to address? Do Correct. you get nervous before a shot? Are you scared of results? Okay. Well, then maybe a faster routine of seeing it, shooting it, right? It's kind of like aim, shoot type idea. Um, yeah. I don't, how, can it, I, how can I have a faster routine? Or if I'm feeling fidgety, how can I get comfortable over it? How can I root into the ground? Like what frees you up? 
What gives you the best chance to hit Correct. a good shot? I'm not saying copy Billy Horschel. I'm not even saying for some of you guys get even close to that. But yeah. he's clearly thought about that. And, and these pros continue to hone their routines. And sometimes I got to change. And look what he did. He almost yeah. won the Open. And he's been such a great player. But I just think that's interesting, guys. You know, What do you think about his presser the night before Sunday? When he talks about uh, how much he embraced this kind of golf, how he was meant for it, and... He think he was basically saying I wanted it the most out there. Yeah, you you know he talked about how this is something I've always wanted, and this is something that I've all a position I've always wanted to be in, and I'm embracing it now. I think, I think there's nothing wrong with what he said. Yeah. He's kind of a cocky guy. I think he's got to carry a chip on his shoulder. Um, he's also very honest, like Rory. He's been yeah. one of the most honest, you know, press conferences. He's cried on you know in the press conferences, really frustrated. Yeah. I thought it was great, you know, did, did, you know, yeah, it, it's fascinating. Like what getting it's, that's incredible getting inside the mind of a pro. Yeah. What motivates him? How could he take that into like 70 degrees and sunny at the next tournament? Like, right. But I loved it. Um, and, uh, I think that's why he did as good as he did. You know? Yeah. I just get curious. Most guys just are not like that, which is interesting. Yeah, I just get curious of like, if welcoming that in, a lot of guys don't even want to welcome the idea in. When when people get asked about what it would feel like to hold the trophy in a press conference, they usually deflect a little bit. They go, "Oh, it'd be great," but you know, I'm not focused on that. I'm focused on Thursday, or you know, whatever. I know it sounds cliche, but it's just interesting. You don't normally hear someone talk on Saturday about how it's a lifelong dream and something he's always. Oh, you're talking on. about visualizing holding. Yeah, but he's but he yeah. also was talking about visualizing it. So right. maybe that you know worked for him and he, and he had a great finish, three under right. Right, uh, you seven know, under heard, total. We've heard the top sports psychologist say, and Brett McCabe, like some guys ha are, res are so results driven. You've got to just work with that, and f they're not so they're not so stay in the moment, one shot at a time. Right. It's like no, no it's my dream to win this this week. I'm here and to I'm win. I'm gonna do it. And all right, let's figure out how to channel that, you know, yeah. um, appropriately. So, yeah. All right. Xander. Yeah. I mean, what do you think of, I mean, I mean, it, it was a bogey free 65. It was just like Stenson 63 in 2016. Um, everybody was playing well. He just looked like he was playing a, I guess a different golf course. Yeah. Um, what sticks out for you? So I don't even, I've been thinking about this all day and I've been wondering if I'm going to say it in a way that makes sense. I don't know if it'll make sense, but I was thinking as I was watching Xander and all the guys coming towards the back nine, and I was really fascinated by this idea of none of them are winners right now. They're all the same. This was around when everyone was around six under, five under. There's probably, I don't know, seven guys within two shots yeah right and was i was great. like none of these guys are winners right now that birdie that they're going to make on the next hole doesn't win them the trophy the bogey on the next hole does not lose them the trophy so i just got really wrapped up in this idea of like now we look at xander and he's like we're like he's a two-time major champ he he shot a 65 bogey free sunday like he got it but he didn't get it for most of the day. He was even with everybody else. What I find interesting, though, is he plotted along the longest and stuck to his game the longest. Now, obviously, that translated to the lowest score, and he shot the cleanest scorecard of anyone. So no you bogus. could say he did win. But during the, the tournament, not really. Like one under day one, one over day two, one under day three, six, seven, six under, seven under. Six, yeah, six under, 65. Six under Sunday. So obviously the six under, you'd be like, oh, he won it on Sunday, but not until the end. So I'm I'm just fascinated by how we can't, what I've learned from, from Xander in that is he used to be the guy that was too, the best player without a major. Right. And he could have easily listened to that and pressed. And I just think he's so good at staying neutral, being who he is, 
focus in on the important stuff. He got a little longer this year with Chris Como, right? He got a real coat. Gained other than his dad. Miles, he's gained five miles per hour in his swing speed. In last but year. didn't change, didn't go crazy, right? Rory's gone crazy with trying to chase speed. He kind of stayed in his lane, didn't change mechanics, just kind of got a bit faster. And now he's a two-time major winner. In two in two months. In we two look months. At him in such a different light. We looked at him in such a different light after he won in clutch fashion, the PGA. Right. And now we watch him. It almost looks like he was just, it was Xander and everybody else at the open. And the crazy thing, sir, is like, he did that for majors years prior. The only difference is maybe he made a couple mistakes coming in, or maybe he lost focus, or maybe they just didn't fall. And he didn't really like listen to the narrative. Didn't doubt him. Or maybe he doubted himself, but maybe he fought through that. Who knows? Didn't seem like he doubted himself. It seemed like he knew he was close and kept putting himself in position. And so I just think it's a great lesson. Like we can't go out there and win our match on every hole. We can't go out there and shoot our lowest score on every hole. Like every time we do that, we lift our head up at the end and we're amazed by what we accomplish. I just did that last week with the no swing thoughts experiment. We're going to do an episode yeah. on that recent uh, soon. And I was amazed. I lifted my head up and I'm like, wow, I haven't played like that in a very long time, but I wasn't trying to. Right. Right. Point. I think point. I think he's just really good. I, I made a tweet. I think this sums up my thoughts on him, but I want to dig in with you. I said, you know, Xander winning a second major is so awesome for four reasons. Number one, he embodies what Tiger always talked about. Quote, just plot along. Two, he's one of the best at staying neutral. He doesn't get too up or too down. Three, he has fun. He makes jokes. He keeps things light in between shots. He's got his best buddy on the bag. He jabs the media and press conferences. And four, when things get tough, he embraces the challenge and competes. You know, that's a big key for me is figuring out how I can compete. And I said, he did this week, every week, year after year, used to be the guy without a major. And now he's a two-time major champ. What a great reminder to all of us in whatever we're trying to achieve. Hashtag keep plotting along. Yeah. I mean, what, and you, you describe that for Scheffler too. Wouldn't you? Yeah. Right. Absolutely. You know, I think uh DeChambeau is a little different, but some really positive things. It's what the greats do. Um, you know, I've watching him and Justin Rose today, it was like back and forth. The difference was comes down to putting. And Xander makes birdies on 11, 13, and 14. Some of the toughest holes in the course. Yeah. And he and he breaks away. Mm-hmm. So Rose was inches away on several putts. He was yeah. right there hitting perfect putts. They just weren't going in or it was a little, his inner sitting his irons a little closer. So I really thought that was um, the key difference. You know, I was watching him, Ev, and it's so interesting because we talk about all these different players. Like, have you ever seen a guy that is just like, there's like, there's no emotion transferring into his game. Like, it's not true. We know what's going on in his head is one is one thing. He's yeah. a variant, but like there's, it's a little, it's like a little like Cantley, right? But clearly we got a two-time major champ here. Cantley's not. It's just like, it just looks, it's, it, it looks so, so, so routine, like so in control, so smooth. It makes you angry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, he's, he's just, he is so dialed in. You know, and that's, you know, other players embrace the crowd or more intense like Justin Rose. Everybody's different, but. But isn't it funny how and when you just say. Hit, and, and he's so on balance, like that high cut, right? He's just so mm-hmm. on balance. And um, it's an amazing place to get because he is so intense. His dad has been so hard on him for years. He worked so hard at this game and then he created that label. Well, he got that label because he had never won a major. It, I, I don't know, man. It's. It's he's, he's it's pretty cool. He's also, I think, a great example of um, you know, when you think about him versus Horschel or him versus Rose, it's different. You don't, yeah. you don't really see Xander, and again, not better or worse. Everybody's different, different mental types yeah. for anyone. But he he seems keep me honest on this. He seems to be a little bit more of a of a feel player. A little bit more. He's he's methodical in his routine, but he's not over exaggerating feels 
right? I think he yeah. gets really clear on maybe what he's trying to create, what he sees. I thought it was so telling. I forget what hole it was. Maybe it was 17 or 16. But the commentator said the wind is coming in and Xander and Rose hit the highest drives they've hit all week to try and ride the win. I was like, wow, how good are these guys? It's yeah. not only left or right, but it's apex and height to try and dr ride the win. I mean, he, he yeah, just I don't, seems I, yeah. like a guy that more of us can try and emulate. I well, think. He's, yeah, he's, Horschel gets yeah. really technical. Rose, really technical. Yeah, it appears that it, it, may, it may it may seem that way. But but I'll tell you what, what stuck out for me, the, the shot I love the most that he hit, that Xander hit was on 16, uh, par five, that little hut pitch over the bunker to mm. three feet. Yeah. Like, and so he rehearsed it four times. He's like hitting this out to end. And like, as amateurs watch this, like that grass is so tight. He's got the lead at the open. He could have just pitched it low seven, eight feet left. But it's like, no, I got the shot. I absolutely yeah. got the shot. And you got to rehearse those. You got to rehearse those pitching and chipping so much. And he's doing it. And he just comes down right on it and spins it in there. Yeah. Um, but you look, yeah, I think what, what what the theme you love is the plot along. He looks in ways unflappable. You know, to, to, to dig into that theme, 52 cuts in a row. 52 cuts in a row. Now, he needs a lot more to get to Tiger. But this is... This is untouched right now. This is and second in scoring, second in strokes gained off from T to green, top 10 in putting. You know, it's uh he's got a he's got some pretty amazing qualities. Um Yeah. It's just a matter of time, I guess, right? For him you know to the go other out thing? do that. Um to go out and do this today, but um yeah. The other thing that I think Xander could teach us is the power of self-belief. Because if you think about his past majors, again, right? It's all a, a shot here or there. It's a bogey here or there. It's a missed putt here or there. Maybe he could have gotten a major win two to three seasons ago. Um, but to do what he did after winning the PGA has to tell you that the comfort of knowing I've done it before just allows you to just go into today be yourself, stick to your plan, hit the best shot you can to the best spot you can, and let's see where the chips fall. That's what the best say. For him to, to shoot bogey-free six under on a Sunday to win his second major, I don't think it's a coincidence that he did it after he got his first. You know, I think that's dead on, Ev. I all, also would add, I, I we haven't listened to his presser because we're doing this show, Um People forget he won the Scottish Open in 2022. And so to win over here or over there, I th I think that would th that's a huge boost of confidence. You know, I, like, hey, I've done it. I've yeah. won it. Like, look, there's been great players over the years that just struggle over in Scotland, right? right. Phil was a great example until he got the win later in his career. But um, yeah, you find those different things to lean on. Um, and look, Ev, you know, I... It's pretty amazing to think he went. He's won two tournaments this year, two and there were two majors. <laughs> you yeah. know, he, he's had five other top fives and some top tens. But I, I mean, somebody. I mean, how how important is this two majors in one year thing? It's extremely important. It's legendary. Like, yeah, you know, I was just looking through it. I've in 2018, Brooks did it, U.S. Open and PGA. Spieth did it in 2015. Masters and U.S. Open. Rory did it in 2014 mm -hmm. with um, Tigers done it twice. The British and PGA. Well, we'll, we'll get or, to him in a second. Actually, many more than that. <laughs> Podrick, <laughs> forget 2008, who had uh, the Open and the PGA, and uh, he had a really good week this week. Tigers actually done it four times. Four even, times, even three majors. Oh, I saw here. the stat of yeah. PGA and the Open. The yeah. Open. Uh, he he even had three in 2000, and then. Nick Price in 94 with two. Um, so, I mean, is Xander has solidified number two in the world? I mean, it, it, it his, can he get player of the year if he does some something big in the FedEx Cup? Because right now, would you still give it to Scotty? We're, again, we've got big tournaments still left. Six wins and a major. 
versus two majors, no other wins. Let me but ask you this. Because yeah. I think these two guys yeah. are absolutely the best right now. Let me ask you this. If Xander doesn't win another PGA Tour event this year, but he wins the gold, if he gets two majors in the same year Don't forget and about an the Olympic, Olympics, guys. <laughs> Olympic gold medal, it'd be pretty hard not to give him player of the year over Scotty, who's won, what, six or seven? I guess from a technical, he's won six times. I six guess from a technical, like, or from a detail perspective, can you take that into PGA yeah, I don't know. voting? That, I would hope you so, know? but yeah, that's a good point. Um, But um, yeah, I mean, uh, I think, you know, gaining five mile, miles per hour off the tee and being top 10 in putting, what a combination. Yeah. What a combination for him. He's clearly, yeah. to be as good as he was, he's made strides there. Yeah, um, but I love how, don't you love how him and Chris Como, they talked about on the telecast, micro adjustments. Yes, right? love that. Little, little less laid off, micro adjustments. Love it. Didn't go away from what he did. Didn't take away his secret sauce. He's always himself. He always plays his game, but you he gain plays, a little, he, he plays little that cut. longer. Plays that cut. We're going to continue to play that cut, but let's get a little more speed in situations where we can use it not all the yeah, time right and i will say this um relating what i said before to every golfer which is obviously it might be a cliche and easy thing to say that yeah after he won his first major winning his second is easier because he's done it before so then someone might be wondering listening well if i'm trying to break 80 or i'm just trying to make my first par and i've never done it before then how do I do it if I if I don't have the comfort of doing it before? You know what I would say? I would say, how can we get comfort in doing anything good? Like, how can we, like another Virgil Herring shout out of who's been on the show, like Jack Nicholas wrote down his best shots for every club in his sc scorecard. So he would remember, you know, like I won the horse race with my father-in-law. Ironically, I thought, oh, this is the yardage I had my hole out right. in. Like, and that, that gave me, like, I've done it before, you know, you or to, if you hadn't done that before, I hit that last shot. I had a great attitude on that last shot, or I struck that seven iron really solid yesterday. Even if I had 99 bad shots, you have I to struck that seven iron really good. We have to bottle, hang on, remember the great moments, great shots and why they were. And, you know, it sounds cliche, but you can't discount you know, the you know, power you of feeling like you've done it before. That's what all the best say. You know, what sticks out for me, uh, just if like it, 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 for people, guys, all of us listening, like, what can I, what can I copy of Xander? That's relatable. His balance. Yeah. If you're a beginner golfer, if you're a good golfer, if you're a great balance is so important and it's like such an old fundamental. Does he ever look off balance? No. Like I would never tell you to copy Scotty Scheffler because he's just such an anomaly, right? It's just not really like, relatable how he goes about it balance is one of the great fundamentals of golf <laughs> so yeah. script dance and posture like hey can you hit this next shot and stay on balance mm -hmm. because most of the time we're off balance it's not going well <laughs> isn't that so, funny though sir we heard that you know, from rick sessinghouse collins coach colin morkow's coach that said first nerves on the first tee yep hold your balance can i stick my finish can i stick my finish on the first tee i'm nervous Okay, my goal on the first tee is not to not lose my ball. It's not to hit a fairway. It's to stick my finish because that's going to do a lot of good things to help you do those things. Right. Yeah. Right. That's a good point. Yeah. So I think that's a that's a that's a key takeaway for you guys. And I also think Xander. So he plods along, right? He has great balance. He seems to hit the shot that is best for him. He's also never not himself personality wise. Like he's not trying to get overly pumped up. You're taking he, jabs honestly, I don't know if you noticed this. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed this. When he went to hug his family, I, I I'm gonna predict right now that Xander might have more majors than Scotty by the end of next year. <laughs> um wow. Bold statement. I'm bold statement. The, the reason I'm saying that is because the way you think he they're just going to come in waves for these guys, the, w the <laughs> way that he hugged his family after was like, this is just the beginning there. They, they, it wasn't like, 
He also wasn't quite sure if he had won yet. That's fair. A little different but, than the PGA, where it was so dramatic. Oh yeah, for sure. But he. But I think what like, you're getting this at, is what like, I'm supposed to do. You like, know exactly. He's he's like, he has a little bit of a silent killer. Oh, he's yeah. Remember, he's, he's very stoic out there. But we talked about this. So, yeah, I think uh, I yeah I I was meant to be here. Maybe it took a little longer than it's supposed to supposed to. And yeah. now look what I'm doing. Right. So. Yeah. So, okay. Ev. So you think he's going to take, uh, he's going to be number one in the world. He's passing Scotty next year. He's well, gonna I don't know about number majors. one in the world. Well, I think Scotty's got that. Who's going to get player of the year. Give me your prediction to close it out this I year. Scotty's got to get... get player of the year. Okay. But the FedEx cup's coming. Yeah, you that's know? true. <laughs> that's what that's I'm true. saying. Xander can still get it. I know you're right, but it <laughs> so would be interesting so if, if Scotty starts making another run towards the FedEx cup playoffs, that's, what's going to be interesting. So, well, there we have it, Ev. Yeah, well, thank you guys as always for hopping aboard. Um, we don't normally do it, but I think we're going to do a recap for Olympic golf, which I'm really yeah. pumped about. Sermon and I great. were saying, I wish they would do a different format than just stroke play um, to make it a little bit more unique and interesting. But um, we're going to do a recap after Olympic golf finishes. We'll see if some of these conversations uh, funnel over into the same guys. Um at, in Paris. So, um, yep. thank you guys as always for hopping aboard. If you liked the episode, subscribe on Apple podcasts, YouTube, as well as follow us on Spotify. Um, don't forget our email newsletter. Every Monday we send out a little nugget, um, to help your mental game, help you get back on track, start your week off right. And also get early access to merchandise drops. Um, so no matter what you're working on, no matter what you're going for on and off the course, remember to plot along and what else, sir? Win the Open Championship and enjoy the ride. Enjoy the ride, guys. Take care.